started from your banana cart to this wonderful storefront you have? Okay. So my entire life, my entire mission was spreading happiness. And I didn't know how I was going to do that. I didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew that I wanted to spread happiness in my life. And I've done a lot of things. I've done real estate and home sales and um, nice. timeshare sales. I've done all kinds of stuff. Stuff, but nothing really was, I knew it wasn't it. I wanted to spread happiness. And so one day I was actually walking through my kitchen and I looked down and there was a banana. And I realized in that moment that a banana is the only fruit that smiles back at you. And I knew immediately that I had to do something fun with a banana. So I ran to the store. I bought every kind of chocolate you could possibly imagine. Actually, Michael's, because I didn't know back <laughs> then that that wasn't real chocolate. <laughs> Um, so I came home, I warmed it all up. I started dipping bananas and it turned into, instead of dipping a whole banana, I would just dip some banana bites so that the family could try them and we wouldn't have to waste a whole banana. By the end of the day, I realized that my name rhymed with banana. It's Leah Lana. It's it my does. <laughs> and by the end of the day, I had a Facebook and Instagram, a business license. Oh my and gosh. I put my real estate license back in the mail and sent it back. And my <gasps> husband came home and he was like, hey, honey, what'd you do today? And I was like, oh, by the way, I own Leah Lana's bananas. Go like me and follow oh me on gosh. Facebook and Instagram. And he just stood there with his mouth open. And I was like, oh, you're waiting for a sample. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> So I gave him a sample. He loved it. And he was like, well, what about real estate? And I was like, oh, I was in the middle of some really big transactions. Wow. I passed them off to my friends. And I was like, I'm, I'm two feet in. I don't do anything um, halfway. So right. I called my friend who had built the bar in my house. And I asked him to build me a banana cart. And he was like, what the heck is a banana cart? I said, I don't know. We're going to figure it out together. But I just want to be able to dip bananas on the spot. So I had no intentions back then of having a shop or having, I guess this was day one. Right. Um, and so I, I started building this banana cart and then I started getting all these questions. Can you deliver? And I was like, I have no idea. This was in March of 2018. I quickly figured out how to box them up. And with by mother's day, wow. I had um, 34 orders from people I didn't know. This was like a month and a half later. And so uh, sorry, oh I don't God. mean to interrupt. Were you just getting orders through Instagram in your website? So mostly, mostly through Instagram. Cause I okay. don't even think I had built the website back then. I think it was all, I just decided to put myself on social media and I right. saw everybody else doing it. I didn't even have an Instagram account until I started this. Okay. And, uh, and so I just, people were sending me messages like, can you deliver? And cool. I was still waiting for the banana cart to be built. So I was like, oh, I guess so. And, uh, and that was how it all started. Wow. And so what made you think um, of opening a storefront? Was it something that you came up with or were you approached by someone? So actually, I about six months into having the banana cart and doing the deliveries, I received a phone call from... Um, one of the very high ups in Caesars and they wanted to, they asked me to open a shop inside Caesars. Wow. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm six months into this. I have no idea what I'm doing. And, uh, and so I, I hired an architect. I built out the entire store and a, maybe a few weeks before everything was supposed to go into motion, the current tenant decided to stay in their spot and so I, I didn't have that opportunity anymore, but it was kind of a good thing because I was terrified. <laughs> Not that that just <laughs> was it just me, happening all too soon? It was so fast and okay. I didn't know how I was going to do any of this. Okay. And so at that moment, once I saw the store on paper, I knew that I had to have a store one day. And so I started looking, but that is not an easy wow. thing to find. Right. And um, it took me about a year of searching before I found my brick and mortar. Wow. So it was about two years ago that you and I met in 20, I think it was the end of 20 or actually the beginning of 2019. 
Okay. Um, so almost yeah, I think it was like February, yeah. one of our events, but um, wow. So that all happened really, really quickly. Very cool. And how yes. are you, how are you liking the storefront now? I love the storefront. Um, it's all new challenges, things okay. that I never expected. This whole business has been an unbelievable challenge. And I, in, I suck at saying no, <laughs> I say yes to everything. <laughs> That's why you're doing um, this how, podcast because you just say yes to everything. <laughs> everything. You're so awesome. Oh my gosh. But I feel like if you don't challenge yourself, you don't change yourself. And if you right. say no to things, then you're not challenging yourself. And so, you know, I get up in front of people and I talk and I put myself all over social media. And sometimes I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I do? But all of those things have challenged me and all of them have helped me grow and to change. And so, um, I just, I, 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 I don't say no to anything. You so, so do. I follow your social media and even if you think it doesn't look good, I think it's cute. <laughs> All your boomerang videos are really, really cute. I like it. <laughs> it's just so crazy because it's such an amazing tool that we have right. that is so, I think, underutilized and should be used so much more. It was so funny. So my grandfather is a very sophisticated businessman. <laughs> and when I told him I was sending back my real estate license and starting a banana business, he thought I lost my mind. Like just was the look of disappointment was unbelievable. And, uh, and doing real estate before you decided to start the banana business. Yes. I was doing real estate. For, was it for a while or was it just something? Oh yeah, in? no, I had been doing oh, real really? estate for yeah, quite some time. Oh my gosh. So, okay. So uh, I can imagine how surprised he was. Oh yes. Yeah. Completely surprised. And so one day he said to me, oh, are you advertising in the newspaper? And because <laughs> he's the guy that reads the newspaper right. every single day of his life. And so I was like, oh my gosh, no, we actually, you know, we use Instagram now. And he was like, what is Instagram? He doesn't know anything about social media. <laughs> yeah. Trying to explain that to a 90 year old man is interesting. Oh, that's funny. Uh, but I was like, no, it's free. And so I think one day I'm just going to have to take out a newspaper ad just so he thinks I'm somebody. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> is he still thinking that you're, you know, just like struggling to get started up and not realize. So now, like, as I show, share with him the success of everything, okay. he's just like, wow, That's it awesome. obviously, he knows that he has realized that I'm really good at marketing myself. And he's like, forget the bananas. Like you you've just done a phenomenal job marketing yourself. And so he tells everybody she's a master marketer. And I'm like, you actually are. So bananas. <laughs> and you're so I, happy. Every, every post that you do, every video you're in, I'm like, gosh, she's always so happy. So, <laughs> so what, what exactly inspires you? I'm just curious to know. Making other people happy. Like that is to my core, my entire life. I just wanted everybody around me to be happy. And if there was anything that I could add to their day, like if I'm having a bad day, which is not very often, but if I ever am and you ask me how I'm doing, I will never tell you I'm having a bad day because I feel like if I say that to you, then you, that could in some way, like make you kind of sad. Like, oh my gosh, the happiest girl I know is sad mm. today. Like now I feel kind of sad. Um, I just, I want everybody to, I tell all the kids, I want people to leave our shop happier than when they arrived. If they call the banana line, I want them to hang up happier than when they called. And if we make a delivery to their door, I want them to close their door happier than they opened it. And that is truly what gets me out of bed every day and what keeps me motivated and keeps some days. I wonder how I'm going to keep going, <laughs> but I it really do is everything. I don't What's that? You do, you do everything. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you do deliveries, you make the bananas, you manage your team. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to delegate. Okay. And um, <laughs> for me, that's really hard because I'm a super control freak right. and I want everything to be perfect. And I wish that I could clone myself a hundred times because a hundred of me would be <laughs> so useful, but um, I'm learning. I'm learning to trust. And you know, I, I'm, I mostly have 16 year olds in okay. my shop. And so this is their first job. And some people forget what it's like to have had your first job at 16 and are very unforgiving. And you know, that's, that's rough because if I could do it all, it would all be perfect, right. but I can't. And I'm learning that in order to grow and to expand, I have to be able to, to delegate. And it's okay if you make a mistake. We've thrown away lots of trays of bananas lately because I'm, I refuse to chop bananas now. 
<laughs> so, you know, I mean, it, it comes with some imperfections, but right. that's when these are teachable moments for the kids. And that's anytime we run into a problem with a customer, I say to them, like, please let us fix this. Like, this is a teachable moment for a 16 year old who is having their first job and let's work through it. Like, what can I do? I'm so about making people happy. And so sometimes it's more challenging than others, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, if they leave happier or we made their day a little brighter than we did our job, Correct. all three of my kids work here. Um, and, and they worked at wet and wild all through the summer because oh, so cool. we had a cart there seven days a week through the whole summer. That wow. was a crazy experience. How did that go? It was, it, it was wild. <laughs> Um, you know, it's 116 degrees outside all summer. Oh yeah. You're standing outside. Uh, toppings are melting that you never even knew could melt. Um, I, you're having to restock all the time. So wow. the last couple weekends we were there on a Saturday, I would make nine trips to wet and wild. Just oh, so this was like a whole learning experience for you. Oh, huge. Doing an outdoor huge. thing for like the entire day. Yes, it was absolutely an amazing experience. I learned so much through that process, Good. but it really, wow. There were days that were extremely, you know, I'm out making deliveries and I've got the shop and then we're running right. out of everything at wet and wild. And then you come back and you go to get more, but they're not frozen yet. And then you got to pull from your, your store stock and then your store's running out. And it's just like, and were, and you, go, it was, were you the only more person delivering or did you have help? Well, I had a delivery driver. I had him all trained. He was doing a fantastic okay. job. And then the military reactivated him. Oh, no. And so I am currently the delivery driver. <laughs> um, but, you know, the really neat thing about all of these things that happen is that I take every one of these moments to learn the position better and to have a better understanding and to implement new procedures and policies and whatever goes into that. So mm -hmm. for me, jumping back into being a delivery driver, which I haven't done in, you know, two and a half years, probably wow. is I've got to see all these people face to face. Face. I've got to see where the flaws are, what needs to be changed and improved. And, and I realized how important my delivery driver was and that this is the face of Leolana's Bananas right. that I didn't realize, you know, you think like, oh, $10 an hour, you pay a delivery driver, they go out and they deliver bananas. Well, they got to be able to answer these questions and they got to be able to make people happy. And, you know, some days are way more challenging than the others when you're stuck outside of somebody's gate, you can't get in their neighborhood or you can't find them wow. or why it's so important to communicate that you're on the way. And just all these little things that um, just like when COVID happened, I sent mm -hmm. home all of my employees and I ran the shop. And wow. that put me right back into the middle of everything and helped me to figure out a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have figured out if I wasn't here. So do with you do, doing a lot of the deliveries now, um, do a lot of your clients get surprised when they see it's actually you doing the delivery? Oh, yes. Very That's much cool. so. And like they, oh my gosh, it's <laughs> it's, <so crazy. laughs> and it's still, I don't know. It's, it's I'm like, oh my gosh, my husband says I get to go out with the local celebrity all the time. That is I'm so like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Leela and a banana. <laughs> but you know, you do make people smile. So everywhere you go, I always like, look forward to seeing you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I adore you. Oh, I adore you too. Every time I pick up orders, I'm like, I'm wondering if she's working today. <laughs> and then I see I, her, I'm like, she is here. Oh my gosh. I have officially announced that I'm no longer working Sundays. So I have worked every single day since November of last year, every wow. single day. And last Sunday was my first Sunday, that, my first day that I officially right. took a day off. And I said, I'm not driving kids to the store. I'm not answering phone calls, text messages. My managers, uh, they can handle it. You can call them. And halfway through the day, I like cried happy tears because it was officially the first time that I had taken a day off in almost yeah. a year. Oh my gosh. I'm exhausted. I'm so tired. I, bet. I, bet. I have wrinkles in all new places. Well, you're so funny. You look great. Um, I mean, on top of you being a busy mom, you know, and a wife, so you're not just a business owner and, you know, a manager, you're also handling everything at home and you got to be there for your family. So I can imagine the duties. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, good for it's you. I'm glad you had a day off. Yes. 
so nice every Sunday. <laughs> Good for you. You, you definitely deserve that. And so, you know what's so crazy uh -huh. is that when you actually take that time and you let yourself rest, I have been more productive since yes. I started removing myself. So I would come in, I'd make all my deliveries and I'd leave like all of the first week, right? Just make my deliveries, mm -hmm. go home, take off Sunday. And then I started to become so productive because I wasn't as exhausted as, you know, normally I'm working 14 hours a day, seven right. days a week. And you just, you can't go on like that. And everyone says like, you can take time off. And I'm right. like, no, I can't. And then somebody said, you're never going to finish it all. You're, there's always going to be more. And so it doesn't matter how many days you work, how many hours you work, there's going to be more. And then I, that really hit me like, wow, that's so true. Like no matter why am I working 14 hours a day when I'm not going to finish everything. And so I've been learning to, to back up and let the kids take over and they've got and it. Delegating duties now, which is good. Yep. And the more that's, I trust them, the better right. they do. That's so, awesome. Cause you do, I mean, I think everybody kind of goes through a burnout phase when they're just constantly, constantly working. So yes. Well, I'm glad you're able to take some time off. At least one day a week is better than no days, right? One day a week is yeah. better than no days. <laughs> Going back to, speaking of COVID, um, and, you know, it's been an interesting year for a lot of people. It's affected a lot of people, um, you know, in a bad way for some, some good. Um, for you, it seems to be doing really well. So how has it affected your business and how has it grown? So I opened my shop doors one week before the governor shut us down. Wow. And uh, I had no idea what was going on. I was just building a store. I was here every day. And then literally one week later, I just stood in my back room watching the governor's speech. And it was just, I, I, I didn't even know what to do. Um, and so I had to think very quickly because I then, now I have a $4,500 a month rent right. that has to be paid. And uh, I had to, I had to rethink. And so the good thing is, is I was already a delivery business and we were still able to do deliveries. And I realized more than ever, mm -hmm. people were going to need those deliveries. They weren't able to leave their house. They, you know, everybody was instructed to stay home. I sent home my teenagers, all of them that day. And, um, me and my delivery girl, we just, we decided, we looked at each other and said, we can either go sit at home for as long as this is going to take, or we can, right. we can just dive in and, and go deliver happiness. And so we did, and we worked 14 hours a day, seven days a week, wow. all through COVID. I have um, my my bachelorette uh, bananas. Are They're my, cute, by the where, way. <laughs> <laughs> is where I invested all my SEO money okay. prior to COVID. And that day, I realized there were going to be no more bachelorette parties. So right. I pulled all my money out of that. And I put all of my SEO money into birthday gifts because I realized nobody was going to be able to go shopping for birthday gifts. And that was going to be something that was very important through all of this. So that's what I did. And um, over COVID, we just really flourished in delivering birthday presents. And one of the, you know, we used to take photos of people as we delivered them. And I would use that a lot for my social media so that you could see your, your mom or your nail lady or your doctor right. receiving bananas. And then what, what I did with those instead was I started to send them to whoever sent the bananas because they could, I realized they couldn't be there in that moment. They couldn't see the happiness that the other person was, was, feeling as they receive their bananas. So that was something that has carried over. And now every single person that sends bananas, we send them a picture of the receiver and get that like moment. And it's so fun, That's the reactions cute. that I get back and everybody's like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Or as I'm taking that photo, the person is like, wow, can you send me a picture right. of that too? And so because we're lacking that that one-on-one -on -one, that personal connection you can't see people's faces they're mm -hmm. behind masks you can't hug them you can't shake their right. hand you can't touch them and so when you get to see somebody receiving that gift and you get to see them smile you know that's something that a lot of us haven't really had in a long time and um and so it's fun it's yeah. really really especially fun. right now where people at the beginning of all this where everyone was stuck at home and they couldn't see people face to face so that's a really great idea i i did see some of the photos and i i noticed you had some of the um local celebrities uh like the vegas golden knights that you did deliveries to so that was awesome hey guys Yes, we did. Um, Mrs. Flurry actually ordered for the nice. entire 
Vegas Golden Knights team, which was absolutely amazing. What an experience that was. Was it a so birthday it party? Such, it, yes. So her, okay. so, uh, she had a birthday party. And so she then sent a dozen bananas to every single person Aww. that attended the birthday party, which was really, really neat. We have such an amazing community. Vegas is has the smallest town feel. And you would never think that of Las Vegas. Right. A lot of people think it's such a big town mentality, but it's very, very close knit here. I like that day to day activities. Walk me through your normal day, like from the time you get up to the time you go to bed. Oh man. So every day is different. I never know what to expect. People can place an order up to two hours prior to having deliveries done. So I have no, I I could start off the day with one delivery and end up with 15. I never know what to expect. So my day usually starts about 6 a.m. now. I'm trying to sleep in till at least six. That's and I, oh yeah. Oh, uh, oh man. I used to start my days at four, four thirty. Um, so now I'm trying to I'm trying to make it till six. I get up. I usually do my workout in the morning. Super important. I always feel better when I work out. I can't believe you even have time to do that. That's awesome. <laughs> if I don't do it at six thirty, it's right. not getting done. Okay. Um, and so I'm usually out the door probably about eight a.m. Unless okay. I have anything that I have to do earlier, and then I get here. We get the shop pretty much set up. I'm working on getting like all the checklists done so that the kids can do it without me and I don't need to be here. Um, And then I gather up all my deliveries and usually head out the door and, um, and then about four hours on Saturday. So it just, you, I have no idea what to expect on any given day and uh, I just roll with it. And so I'm normally home. I've been trying to get out of here earlier, Mm -hmm. but uh, you know, a lot of times seven, eight o'clock at night, and, um, you know, visit with the husband, hang out with my kids outside of work for a few minutes, try and eat some right. dinner. I'm eating at very unhealthy hours. <laughs> but sometimes, it'll get you better. Know, that's your only... <laughs> What's that? I said, it'll get better soon. Oh yeah. When, when you start delegating <laughs> more work... duties. Right. <laughs> yes. I'm putting those processes in place so I can eat dinner at a normal hour. And then I'm usually in bed probably about 10 o'clock and then I start all over the okay. next day. Wow, that's a busy day. Are you the mastermind of all the ideas, the the fun toppings, the, you know, just the different things that come to play when it comes to your bananas? And I know you do Sundays too. Like who comes up with all this stuff? So you know what's really funny is a lot of times I feel very uncreative and then people read the banana split menu and I'm just like, oh, I made it so basic, right? right. Like, oh, the coffee lovers and then toffee heaven. And they're like, oh my gosh, those are such great names. And I'm like, they are. what? I, I just like, they're I don't really know. I, feel, names. I like them. And I try to keep everything so basic because mm-hmm. the more complicated things are, the more you have to explain. And I would hear the kids and they are explaining this and explaining that oh. and people are looking confused and building a menu is literally probably the most challenging thing I've ever done in my entire life. Wow. Because you have to get, you know, everybody that walks through the door has to understand what you're selling and they have right. to understand how it works because if they don't, they just stand there and they don't get it. And so I would just interview everybody as they came in and I'm like, well, what about this? And does that make sense? And how do you feel about this? And do you understand that? And so I just picked everything apart. I love to ask questions and I love to have feedback. Like people would be like, oh, I didn't really want to say anything. I'm like, no, please tell me, like, I want to know. And so just hearing all these kids run through things and, and, you know, just kind of like tweaking things here and fixing Mm -hmm. this and. And, you know, all these things that just, they seem like such small things, but at the end of the day, they're really big. And, um, and so, and then going back to your question, interviewing these kids, or interviewing, um, asking the kids, what would you change? What would you do? Yeah. You know, just getting, because they're young and they're, you know, a lot Mm. of the people coming in are their age group. And so what would you do different? And, and so many of them have such good ideas and they offer their own, you know, input on things. And so it's really fun. And that is sometimes that's how we get new ideas. I am probably the most of the mastermind behind all of it, but not all of it, the majority of it, but as they're here more and more, they're starting to, to have their own ideas, which I love. And some of them come up with 
really good stuff. And I'm like, whoa, I right. love this. So That's it's cool. Fun. And it gets them to interact and feel important with, you know, part of decisions. That's awesome. Yes, absolutely. Speaking of dinner, I know it's close to dinner time. Um, if you could have dinner with anyone, any, any person today, famous or not famous, um, dead or alive, who would it be? I don't and like this I, question <laughs> <laughs> because there's only one person I would choose to have dinner with and it would be my grandmother oh. and she's been gone and she was just, oh, oh my gosh, I think of her every single, what's that? Is she just as amazing as you are? Oh, she, uh, my mom went back to work when I was little and so I was with my grandmother every day. Um, until I turned about two and a half and she told my mom, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> too much of a handful. <laughs> but we talked on the phone every single day of my life until they finally moved here uh, in, um, oh my gosh, maybe probably maybe about seven years ago, my grandparents moved out mm -hmm. here and then I got to see my grandmother every single day that I possibly could. And so she passed away in 2015. Oh, and uh, I think every day, like I wish she could, I wish I could tell her about the banana business. The banana I wish that yeah. she cool. would have loved what I was doing and she would love my pink hair. <laughs> oh, was it not pink before she passed? It was passed? not pink back oh, okay. then. No, I did that like, I think the year after she passed away. Okay. What and made so you decide to go pink? Was it just, was it like her favorite color or? I, I love pink. Okay. I had been blonde my entire life and I mm -hmm. wanted to do something different. And I just, I wasn't made to have dark hair. I mm -hmm. knew that. And I had tried to go dark once and it just, it wasn't me. And so I started with a little bit of pink. It was like baby pink and we kind of incorporated it into the blonde, the platinum blonde, okay. but it goes away very quickly. And so little by little, I got darker, darker, darker. And then this is just, and now it's such a, it's such a staple. It's such right. a part of me and everywhere I go, people know it's me because of my pink hair Right. and it's my brand. Right. And so right. at this point, like I'm going to be 95 years old and rocking pink hair. <laughs> you can't, yeah, you can't go back to, to blonde. It's got to stay pink. No. I like and it's it. so I funny think. because people that are very like literal and mm -hmm. they're like, oh, but it's bananas. You should have yellow hair. And I'm like, well, it's blonde. <laughs> right. But I did that and you know, I'm the banana queen. So I'm right. going to go with pink. You can do what you want. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I like it. Well, pink looks great on you. So I hope you never go back to blonde. Well, thank you. And pink and yellow look so good together, right? Like yeah. if there were two colors that right. I, you know, I think they just go together perfectly. So awesome. And it's fun. It is fun. It's a de definitely a fun color. And it, um, for me, when I see it, it just kind of brightens up my day. So <laughs> I always look for the pink hair when I walk in. I'm like, is she here? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it makes it me happy. Not me from anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of starting off your day, so what is the daily affirmation or is there a specific quote that you like to start your day off with? Oh, man. You probably um, have a ton. <laughs> I love quotes. Mm -hmm. I'm really bad at thinking of them off the top of my head. I, I'll go through them. Like I have an entire folder on Pinterest. I have tons of them you? saved on my phone. I love quotes, but so I do you really just kind of go back and like read things that you pinned on your Pinterest board or okay. Just, and I think they have to apply to that moment for me. So just yeah. kind of whatever I'm feeling or dealing with or wherever I am in life, like I just, I'll go find the right quote that fits that moment. Okay. And just kind of, I don't know. I, I wake up excited every day for the challenge and I've never, I've never thought of failing. Everyone's like, Oh, what are you afraid of? And failing is not one of them because I've right. never, if I, if I was worried about failing, I would have given up a long time ago because I've encountered more challenges than I one bet. could ever possibly begin to, to think about, but I've never looked at anything as I can't do it. I have to give up or so I think just waking up every day, realizing that it's going to be a challenge mm -hmm. and how are you going to overcome that? What, what are you going to change? What are you going to implement? What are you going to do when you're met with COVID-19? Right. What are you going to do when you're met with you know, I can't get my banana cart up this pathway and into the right. house that hired the banana cart. What am I going to do when I can't access this neighborhood or I have an angry customer? Just every day is a challenge. And how do you overcome that? And really, I think that is that 
that's who I am. I just figure out a way. You definitely learn to adapt to the situation. That's awesome. Because you're, you're right. I mean, like I said, 2020 is a rough year for a lot of people. Um, I, it was definitely a, um, a challenging year for myself. Um, but, you know, a lot of great opportunities. I, I just got my real estate license. Um, so and excited. I'm, <laughs> I'm excited I'm too. Proud of you. Thank you. Um, you know, I had no excuses. So it was like, I'm not really doing anything right now. I have to just buckle down and study. Um, so yeah, and now starting this, launching this podcast. So um, that's definitely something, you know, challenging and exciting, you know, um, about this year. But like I said, it's just how you kind of look at things. Um, it definitely is a challenging year for a lot of people and you're definitely looking at, at, you know, at it in a good positive way. Cause you know, like you said, you opened up your shop and a week later we completely shut down. So I'm glad to see you doing so well. Um, again, I appreciate you taking time out today. You've had a long day, so, um, I'm going to go ahead and let you go so you can go have dinner with the hubby and the family. Well, I appreciate you so much. I think you're doing an amazing thing. Thank I'm so you. happy to be able to support you. Um, this is awesome. I'm, I'm super proud of you. So Thank you. you keep doing your thing and have fun. And I and look forward to seeing you soon. I'm going to stop in and get some bananas soon before yay, the holiday. I would love that. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, awesome. Leah. I appreciate you. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Have a wonderful week and um, we'll see you again soon. Thank you, Donna. Bye. Bye.